But then what I want to talk about is the idea of, of advice or of following guidelines and how I think you shouldn't <laughs> because because I've got this pretty clear idea in my mind of what I'm trying to accomplish and what I'm trying to get to, how I want things to feel, how I want this overall work to shape up. And even just like, you know, this sort of awareness of the feelings inside of me, that if I can get those on a page, maybe those will resonate with somebody else. And I'm much more interested in resonating with the people that are like me more so than trying to connect to some mass audience because that's just never going to work and who cares about that anyway if I want to make money on something I can learn to fucking play the stock market or something like it's not a reason to be a writer and maybe it's a little ironic that I say like you shouldn't listen to other people's advice necessarily because that's all this podcast really is really right it's just me explaining what I think about stuff and here's how I think it should go and here's what I think is a good idea and uh, I'm certainly not alone. You can find if you, you know, go on YouTube and shit, there's a lot of writers that are just like, here's my ideas about stuff. And some of them I vibe with and some of them I totally don't. But in all these cases, we're all just in our own little bubble explaining what works best for us or in my case, and I'm not the only one for this either, it's extra obnoxious because it's like, here's what's gonna work for sure. <laughs> you know, it's not like a tried and true like a guy who's written six novels telling you some asshole who hasn't written any novels <laughs> and uh, you know hopefully it's like something will stick or like a little idea will happen but I definitely think that it's best to avoid everyone's advice at least initially because we don't know what we're talking about we really are in our own little bubble our own little perception of things which I think is valuable and useful and we should be in our own little bubble and we should be learning how to express what it feels like to be in our own little bubble as much as possible. But as for actual concrete, useful advice, it's hard to say if it's valuable in that sense. But then there's the other side of the coin where there's this girl I come across on YouTube quite a bit that I, I do really like whenever I see her stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about her. Her name's Ellen Brock. And I like her because she is an editor. She's not just a writer trying to tell you about writing. She is a professional editor. She has tons and tons of stories going past her all the time. So she's not just trying to divine some rules of the trade based upon just this very specific idiosyncratic example of her own work like we fucking blabber-faced writers do. She sees all kinds of stuff. She sees patterns. She sees common problems and common mistakes so her videos I really like because it's practical advice it's actual advice it's like this is the stuff that if an editor or if a first reader at a publisher or something starts reading your shit and sees these things they're just not gonna bother <laughs> you know because they've seen it a hundred times before and it's never been good so why is yours gonna be good you know if the first page has all these red flags it's like, well, fuck this thing. I just don't have time for this. See you later. So that's really great. However, even in that case, I find that I'm getting influenced by listening to her in a way that I don't want to be. One of them is don't start your book with a character waking up because it's just a cliche and just it's been done too many times and everyone does it. And I was like, oh shit my story starts with the character waking up and in my case it's it's weirder because the character wakes up in a church so already that's weird and then it's revealed real quickly that the church is just an exhibit of a church that's on an alien station <laughs> you know the doors open and outside is this weird ass place so I'm like you know what I'm like that's I think that's the right way to do it that's cool I think that's a great opening but there is that part of me when I hear don't start your book with the character waking up that kind of can't help but take the advice. Like, especially when it's someone that you know is like, yeah, I do believe they know what they're talking about. Or if you get advice from like a friend who you know is also is a good writer, it's like, I'm going to take the advice. I'm going to take this to heart. But maybe I shouldn't yet. Maybe right now that's not the right thing to do because I got to do my own thing here. I've got to make my own weird story 
even though this is the rule and don't do this, maybe I got to do it. Maybe that is what will make my thing stand out, is that it's got the cliche and it's got the thing you're not supposed to do. But it's because, not because it was an accident, not because it was a lazy choice, but it's because that is what I want to do. And I don't want to get thrown off. And as like fucking bombastic and black and white as my dumb opinions can seem to be, it is very easy to be swayed and very easy to have your mind changed. And I definitely find that. If someone really insists on something, I probably will change it. (laughs) But I don't want to. Not yet. Another example is she mentioned that a common problem is books that lack conflict. You know, you might just have a meandering chapter where nothing particular happens. And that that's a common problem that is a big problem. That people just kind of write these uh, books that don't have any momentum and they kind of don't realize that they're doing it. Or they're just like filling space because they feel like they need to fill space, or they're just writing chapters because they have this weird sense from the outside that this is how it's supposed to be when it's not serving what they're writing. And when I think about other writers, I'm like, yeah, I want you to follow all her advice. I want you to follow everything Ellen Brock ever said because I don't want to read a boring book. I don't want to read a shitty book. I don't want to read a half-assed book. So if you can follow all her advice and it'll tighten up your book, please do. But for me, myself, I can't do that because, again, with that advice, this very chapter that I'm writing, quite a few of these early chapters are that. They are meandering. They don't have specific conflict. They are that lost in translation thing. It is a story about, in these early parts, meandering about a spaceship and not not having anything to even do it's like you're looked after she's she's looked after she's taken care of she doesn't have to worry about food and lodging but she doesn't have anything to do all day even if she wanted to because she's not a part of this place she's not a part of the society that is the point that is what it's about but on the surface when i hear don't write these chapters with no conflict with nothing happening i'm like oh fuck is that what i'm doing Is this boring? Is this the most boring thing ever? Am I fucking up? (laughs) And I've got to like... Even though I've been working on this for months and I'm deep in and I know what I want and I know where I'm going, I still have to diffuse that worry of like, oh fuck, I'm breaking a rule. I'm breaking a big time rule. What am I doing? And all of this stuff could be true. Maybe my story shouldn't open up with a character waking up. Maybe it shouldn't have these chapters that are just about existing in a space station where nothing actually happens besides trying to absorb this environment that is almost unabsorbable for this character. Maybe all of these things are changes that should be made, but I don't want to worry about that now, and I don't think I should worry about that now. I can worry about this later. If I submit this book and no one likes it, if all I get is rejections, then I think it's time. Then I think it's time to go down the list of the common practices and the stuff to avoid. And then it's time to get reactions from other people and from friends and figure out what they think could be changed. But I don't want to do that until it's clear that that's what needs to happen. Even the idea of getting feedback on something I just don't want to do it I want to just write this and edit this myself and send this out and see what happens because I know that if I give it to people and if they give me feedback I know I will change things and I I just don't trust that it will be better I know I will do it and I know I'll convince myself it was the right thing to do Like the way movies are just like rewrite after rewrite after rewrite. Are these rewrites actually better? Who knows? They're just, they're someone else's perspective. They're someone else's view. Now it's different, I feel like, if if there is a mechanical problem. Like uh, my book I wrote about The Last of Us, my nonfiction book. I had this long introduction, really long. And I sent that book to my friend Brad and I'm like, hey, look at the whole book, of course, if you have time. 
But what is going on with this introduction? What, like, I just know this is wrong. What the fuck is this? What do I do with this? And we worked with it and eventually basically cut it. It's basically just not necessary. And uh, not coincidentally, I wrote the book first and the introduction second. So everything in that introduction is in the book because it all found its way in. So the introduction really was just the, the wrong thing. And I could feel that it was the wrong thing. So having the outside opinion and the advice was like, okay, good, yes, let's try to fucking fix this thing. And if I feel that way about this, this novel, I will do that too. If I'm just like, something isn't working here and I can't figure out what, that's the time that it's like, okay, somebody come uh, see what you can notice, see what you can point out to me. But I, at the same time, I sort of fear change for change's sake. I want this book to be so idiosyncratic. I want this book to be a Keith McNally book with a capital K, capital M, capital N. You know, just this is the book that only this fucking guy would write. So, basically, that's my advice is don't listen. Don't listen to advice. Don't listen to stuff. You should do this. You should do that. Because it's so easy to get caught up in. Like this one, I remember this one story that I was working on for many, many years. Someday I might get back to it. But it was kind of that show don't tell thing that everyone says. I took that to heart way too much where I was like, you know what? I'm going to write this with no reference to people's internal state. I'm going to write it third person, but with no so-and-so felt this, so-and-so had this memory, this sense, any of that. Everything was going to be descriptions of facial expressions. Like, I want all of these characters' internal life to come through purely from an outside observance, which, now that I'm older and I look back, I'm like, not only is that super hard, and I don't really know why I was doing it, that's not what books can do. (laughs) Trying to describe a facial expression in a book is a goddamn nightmare. That's a movie thing. You know, in a movie, a facial expression can carry a lot of weight and a lot of resonance. It can tell a big part of this character's story and their internal life. It can tell a mile of things. In a book, it can't. It's so hard to describe. When you're, like, describing the movements of eyebrows and It's just, it's fucking crazy that I thought I could do this. When the strength of a book is that I can tell. (laughs) You don't have to show all the time. You can just tell. You can tell how this character is feeling. You don't have to try to show it. And I just, I don't know why I got onto that track. I don't know why that seemed important. But I stuck with that particular story. I stuck with that method of trying to write for years for no reason just because I heard it somewhere and there's one YouTuber oh this one blew my mind Uh, I can't remember her name but it was uh, a list of like here's the rules about writing that they tell you that you shouldn't follow and it was really wacky because she's definitely from a younger generation than me and in her school they were big so big on not using the word said that there was a fucking sign in her classroom, in her English classroom, that said, said is dead. Saying that you shouldn't use the term said in, a st- in writing, you should come up with exclaimed or intoned or different words for said. That is literally the worst advice I've ever heard about writing. Because said is an invisible word. It's just a word you don't notice. It's just utilitarian. It's just to tell you who fucking said something. It's a perfect thing to do. And in fact, it is what you should do. You should only not break out the said in extreme circumstances because it's immediately, it's awkward and it's weird to read and it's not, it's the wrong thing to do. And this teacher is teaching her whole class this wrong thing to do. And this poor girl was like, yeah, and I fucking, for years, for years, even now she says like her inclination is to not use the word said. If she's just kind of not thinking about it, she'll come up with some flowery, shitty word that ruins what she's working on, and she has to remind herself to just say said, just use said. So I guess the best way I could explain it is, don't pay attention to others, don't listen to their advice, don't follow their rules, 
as long as everything is going well. Then, if you get stuck, if you don't know how to proceed, if things aren't going well, then go find backup, go find help, go find outside opinions, try out these things that people say. But until then, fuck them, man, fuck them all. <laughs> well meaning though they may be, you gotta be your own person. You gotta fucking not only put your stamp on this thing, every fucking atom of this story has to be yours. Which is not to say that you shouldn't take inspiration from things because uh, everyone does that and it's great. I've got like just so many influences and inspirations and oh this is taken from that and this is taken from that but it's all got to go through you and when it comes out the other side it shouldn't even be recognizable as the source material because it's infused with the you of you. <laughs>